on here with YouTube videos. And uh, they're doing some cool stuff. There's some really cool stuff going on out there. And this is COVID-19. Everybody's learning how to make bread, you know, for the first time. And um, for a lot of them, they're total amateurs. So I'm going, to, I'm going to videotape this just like normal, but this pre-cooking method is, um, is used in Patashu and has been for many years, and it works really well. What we're going to be doing is taking, um, well, it mentions in the recipe milk and water. So I'm using the small recipe, two ounces and two ounces. You can choose with this recipe if you want to use milk or if you want to use water or if you want to use both. If you use milk all by itself, you're gonna have a lot more lactose in your recipe, so that's gonna give you more browning, lots more browning. If you use half and half, it'll be sort of medium brown, and if you use all water, it'll be a lighter brown. So if you're making eclairs, for example, and you want a lighter browning, you know, lighter color in your finished product, then you can go with all water. If you want it even lighter than that, you can go with, substitute the butter out for shortening, because shortening has no lactose in it. And lactose, is in milk and it's it's also it's a sugar, it's a natural sugar so it's going to be there and it's going to cause some browning it's going to caramelize and cause uh, cause things to get brown so depending on what you like or what whoever you're serving likes um, you can choose the ingredients uh, and substitute out as you want to to adjust the color you will get a significantly lighter color so what I've done here is I'm using butter real butter and just straight water. So I got four ounces of water. I'm gonna put that in the pot. I'm gonna put the, the butter in there. And I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil. Um, as it comes up to a boil, I'm gonna add the flour to the to this mixture, and it's gonna suddenly turn into a paste. And what that's gonna do is it, it's going to uh, start forming a dough. But it's high in fat. It's got a fair amount of butter in it. Um, I mean, geez, there's, a whole two ounces of butter and it's only four ounces of water so it's a lot of butter but with the lactose that naturally occurs in butter there's going to be a little more browning so we'll get sort of medium color with this i like um pate choux. use it for a lot of things you can make them large you can make them small we used to make little mini eclairs that were only like two inches long and we'd fill them with pastry cream and we would top them with chocolate and we'd make hundreds of them and people just love them because they can just pop them like candy. Um, little profiteroles, little round profiteroles could be a great way to fill, um, to just make fun little things. And the pastry is so neutral that it doesn't interfere with the flavor of the filling. So if you want to put in something like, let's say, a raspberry mousse, you're going to taste raspberry. You could put raspberry mousse inside, put a, a fresh raspberry in there, and put the cap back on. And it could be... Um, you know, just really, really a, a nice little bite. What, like a little, well, it's it's like a, it sounds like a single bite of raspberry, all this raspberry. But the patachou will just be crunchy and uh, sort of light, lightly crunchy, and it just help to uh, differentiate from all the softness of the mousse. So uh, you could really fill these with almost anything you like. We'll be doing this in Bakery Basics when we uh, get to patachou. We'll be making some eclairs. We'll be making some swans profiteroles and uh, all of these things are fun to make and they're, they're really tasty so we spend a day just on pate choux and the pre-cooking method so this butter is starting to melt pretty nicely here the water's heating up I'm breaking up the butter a little bit I don't want to bring it to a boil and leave it boiling I don't want to evaporate off this moisture um, I want to keep some of the moisture in here it comes, starting to boil. So I'm gonna turn my fire down to about 10 or 11, throw in my flour, and I'm just gonna to start to stir this up. And the flour is gonna start absorbing the water really quickly. And at first it gets real lumpy, but as you stir, you're gonna find it, the lumpiness goes away. And I keep it moving pretty fast because the fire is still on half power. So I want to cook this enough so that we evaporate off some of the moisture and we, we gelat you know, cook it enough so that it starch gelatinizes. And you'll know you're done 
when you see the bottom of the pot, you could probably see the film that's starting to build up on the bottom of the pot. When you get a film, that tells you the starch is cooking because it starts to stick to the metal. It starts to stick to the pot. So I just keep it moving so we don't get any browning. We don't want any browning in this. And once I'm pretty happy with it, I've got a good film formed on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over to a mixer. And uh, we're going to start paddling it with the mixer and add eggs to it. Now the trick with pat -a it's a very simple recipe. But um, you gotta get the moisture content just right. It's gotta be just right. So uh, I'm gonna let this paddle for a few seconds and cool down, because if I put an egg in there right now, I'm afraid it'll cook the egg, and I don't wanna cook the egg. Um, I just want the eggs to go in there and, and kind of re-establish that moisture that we evaporated off when we were cooking it. So I want to get that moisture content just right so that it will pipe nicely and it'll bake nicely. Now, Padishu bakes at a fairly high temperature. It says 400 degrees. That's pretty high. Um, but the idea there is that all that water that's trapped inside, what it will do is it'll immediately start turning to steam once it's in the oven. And that steam gets trapped by all that egg and by the flour and it puffs. And it's only because we have rapid heating and a lot of steam. So now that this has started here, let's switch the camera so you guys can see what's going on in the mixer. You can see the dough is just sort of cooling down a little bit. We're going to start by adding one egg. I have three eggs that are listed on the recipe. Let's start with one. And right now it looks like cheese curds. Um, right now the fat and the water in the egg, are they don't like each other. So they're trying not to mix. But the egg will start to cause this mixture to start to get creamy. And as it does, it's restoring moisture to the dough. But I can see it's still pretty stiff, even though it's getting creamy. So now that egg is in, we're going to go ahead and add another egg. And I may or may not need this third egg. It all depends on how much moisture was cooked out at first. I want to reestablish the moisture, but I want to make sure that it's not too much. If it's too much, then it won't pipe correctly and it won't bake correctly. It'll be too much moisture. So let's see if this second egg does the trick. Now what if I need that part of that third egg? Well, what I can do, if I need just part of it, if I need just to make it a little bit more moisture, I'll break the egg up and mix it, just add a little bit of it to see if I need it. So it's looking pretty good so far. It's getting nice and creamy. But the way to know for sure is to test it. And in order to test it, um, there's a couple different ways of doing that. My favorite way you can see it in the handout, is my little gnome hat test. Um, what I do is I stick my finger down in the mixture. And I pull up a little point on my, on my finger. Now that little point, if I go up like this and the point just goes, mm, just slowly bends over, I know I've got the right amount of moisture. If it stays straight up, that means that it's too dry. It needs a little bit more moisture. And if it goes over really fast, it means it's too wet. And I need to maybe start over. But this did just what I wanted it to. So I'm going to try that again, just to be sure. Now you see, now it's sitting straight up. It's not bending over. So I could probably, I'm right on the edge of it being the right amount of moisture. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spoon. I'm going to beat up this third egg and just add maybe a small part of this egg, just to add a little tiny bit more moisture. There are other ways of testing. Um, let's just add just a portion of that egg. We'll mix that in. Add a little bit more moisture. 
Get that mixed in. And don't worry, when we do bakery basics, we'll go back through this again. Okay, so that's nice and thoroughly mixed in. The other way to test it, and a lot of chefs do this, they'll just take their paddle and they'll lift it up. And if it comes off as a nice V shape, that tells them also that it's probably ready. My finger test. Yeah, a little gnome's hat just, goes, yeah, just bends right over. That tells me it's ready. That tells me we've got the right amount of moisture so it'll be firm, firm enough to be put in a piping bag and we'll be able to pipe this out into individual eclairs and uh, profiteroles. If it's too loose, you'll put it in the piping bag and it'll come running right out of your piping bag. And that, that's frustrating. So let's get all this dough. Gonna put it right in my piping bag. I've got a fairly large straight tip attached to this because I'm gonna be piping eclairs and profiteroles, so I figure that a straight tip makes that easy. Although there are people, there are chefs out there that use a star tip for piping this, and that's perfectly okay. Um, it just looks different. Camera over. Where am I? So, a straight tip um, is just going to give you a smooth exterior. If you use a star tip, it'll give you a ribbed exterior. Either way, when it bakes, the ribs will usually puff out anyway. I've seen even the famous French chef, Francois Payard, he'll, he'll use a star tip. And it works out fine. Um, it's all personal preference, but I, I like using a nice large straight tip for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pipe a log, and then stop squeezing, and then go backwards and cut it off. So another log, go backwards, cut it off. So as I pipe, I just try to keep them consistent size, stop squeezing, push backwards, and we'll cut it right off. And after all, if I was doing, like I used to do several hundred of these at a time, I'd want to make sure they're all the same size, so they all look consistent. If I want to make profiteroles, I just hold my bag above the surface, and I squeeze until I get a ball. I stop squeezing and I just pull away. And the sharpness of the metal tip will just cut it off for you. Now, even if they're not perfect, it's okay because even if you get a Hershey's Kiss on the end like that, um, you can always come along with your finger and just, just flatten that out if you need to and it will just bake right out. So this will all puff nicely when it bakes. So we're gonna, I'm gonna bake these off, throw them in the oven real quick. Um, these will bake pretty fast. The water is going to, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna start to boil immediately and we'll get a nice puff result. Might be my blood. <laughs> it's still going. 